All right. Hey, uh, today we are in uh, our next part of our ecology notes here. And it's kind of, it's a short um, a short bit today and kind of our last little population graph that we're going to look, look at. Um, and today's notes are predator versus prey populations. So we've been talking a lot about how we have exponential growth, then we level up at a carrying capacity. Uh, species exist um, at that in that range. Um, however, when we see two species that are kind of directly connected in this predator versus prey relationship, their population graphs behave very differently. Okay, and not like um, there are some species that eat a variety of others, uh, and so it, it's not going to work the same. We're talking about ecosystems where there is one main predator that is consuming one main um, prey type. And we'll go through a couple of examples here today. So you should know a predator and prey are what we care about are how their population graphs look. Uh, that, I'm sure in the wrong PowerPoint here. That's okay. Um, so here is a look at that links in the hair there. That is one of the more common um, studies up in northern Minnesota, up in Canada, there are lynx and there are snowshoe hares. And those two populations are kind of directly tied together. Snowshoe hares, their main um, predator are lynx, and lynx survive almost entirely on snowshoe hares. And we've been collecting their data for quite some time. This is just the 20 years at the start of the century when we were um, a lot of trapping was going on, etc. You see, as the hare population grows, the lynx population follows to a point until there are too many predators and that prey population dips. That predator population dips because they're going to die out as they don't have as much to eat. Then when there are fewer predators, that prey population is going to take off again, um, et cetera, et cetera, kind of in, in perpetuity here. Um, these two populations behaving almost inversely of each other. Um, actually, and I like this graph a lot because it shows kind of a, I mean, use a um, trigonometry term here, kind of this sinusoidal curve and just a lag phase behind it. So as the hair populations are doing great, there's a ton of more food for the lynx. The lynx have all kinds of babies. Um, and then all of a sudden the hair populations aren't doing as well because there's a bunch of lynx and they, there's those two populations ebb and flow with each other like that. Um, one example that we're going to look at is in our closest national park to the state of Minnesota, and that is Isle Royale National Park. If we look at it on a map, here it is. Um, Duluth, Minnesota is right down here in this corner of Lake Superior. This large island that looks like it should belong to Canada or Minnesota is actually technically part of Michigan. How that works, I'm not positive. But you can take a ferry from Minnesota over to Isle Royale. Um, and it's an island that has a wolf population and a moose population. So every once in a great while, that bay will actually freeze over and has allowed species to travel to and from the island. Um, typically, in the last several years, the, the ice hasn't formed there. And so these populations are isolated. Scientists love to study isolated populations because we're not taking the consideration immigrants or emigrants or, or different conditions. It's kind of our own little um, experiment there. We talked at the beginning of the unit. It's hard to do ecology because you can't control all the variables. If it's an island population, you can kind of control some variables because you can you kind of know there's not going to be new moose moving in or new wolves, um, et cetera, there. Uh, and so we've been doing that. We've been studying this this wolf population. Uh, if you look back to the 1950s, we started looking at these two. Uh, and this is a great graph to look at here. If you notice, it has two Y axes. That's important. All right. One goes from zero to 50. The other goes from zero to 2,500. Remember our, our um, trophic levels pyramid. There's not going to be equal numbers of, of wolves and moose. So if we graphed them on the same scale, the wolf population would just look like a little flat line by zero. But if we zoom in and compare the two, we can see that, yeah, though there's this back and forth relationship with 
as the wolves grow, the moose die out. As the moose, the moose grow, the wolves slowly kind of catch up behind them, um, etc. Going forward to today. Yeah, oops, I'm sorry. And um, yeah, that, that is a, our case study of a kind of the ebb and flow of predator versus prey populations. There'll be a short assignment based on Isle Royale National Park.